Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I have got a small shop project that I want to share with you. We're going to build what I'm calling the Robin Renzetti Cooling Fingers. I'm using some inspiration that I got from a friend, fellow YouTuber, Robin Renzetti. Uh, he had a cooling nozzle that he built years ago, and ever since I've seen it, I was like, man, one day, one day, I'm going to make me a set of those because it's better, it's safer than what I'm currently using. What I currently set up, I don't like at all on my grinder. You'll see, it doesn't make any sense. What is Renzetti Cooling Fingers? He doesn't call it that, no one calls it that, I do. You'll see once you see the parts and I explain to you what I'm building. It's a neat little project, I think you'll enjoy it. So let me show you the parts and pieces and we will get started constructing the Renzetti Fingers. So on the workbench here, I have almost everything that I think that I'll need. Got a torch, got a piece of half inch copper pipe. I've got some eighth inch copper tubing. I've got some coffee straws, some little stir sticks, little bitty coffee straws. I've got some eighth inch welding, stainless steel welding rod that I've got. You'll see why I've, uh, I've got these, all of this stuff and it'll all make sense in just a second. But let's walk over I know this this is total random stuff but you'll see it will make sense let's walk over to the grinder i'll explain what it is we're building and why i'm building it you'll see so a video or so back you may have watched me check out this uh it was an auction find grinder i didn't know if it was any good or not we put a temporary cooling system on it just to make just to grind this chuck in and to test some parts to see how accurate this machine was. And it was grinding within a tenth over the entire chuck, which was really good. And that makes this grinder a keeper. But in my world, few things are more permanent than a temporary system. Does that make sense? This cooling system works perfectly fine. And I said it was temporary, but knowing me, if I don't do something now, it's going to be a permanent temporary system. So, I don't like this system for one main reason, and that is in order to not put so much coolant on this chuck and just flood everything, you really need a lot of it to get a good quality grind, in my opinion, and it really needs to be where the action's happening. And that's right where the wheel's contacting the part. And in order to not just totally flood everything and make a huge mess, you need to direct your coolant right at where the grinder, you know, the business, edge of the grinder where it's doing its business. So what I did is I just bent this copper tubing, jammed it up here right next to the, you know, uh, wheel. If you hit something with that and it pulls that under the wheel, yeah, this grinder's not going to take kindly to getting a piece of 3 h inch copper sucked up under a gap that doesn't exist under this wheel. And uh, if you ever had a wheel come apart on you, it's not, not something you want to really be, be a part of. It's pretty, pretty violent. So I'm going to build a system that is, like I said, Robin Rossetti, Magic Cooling Fingers, inspired by him with my own twist on it. You'll see. It's going to have sacrificial fingers. It'll be adjustable. It will be or modifiable to a certain extent. And uh, I think that it will just work better and be safer. And that's the reason why I'm building what I'm building. So let's go over to the bench. Enough enough jabbing. Go over to the bench and get started building the Robin Rosetti Cooling Fingers. Magic Cooling Fingers. So the idea with the spray nozzle is to get that coolant as close as possible as it can be to the area of the wheel that's doing the grinding. And what I want is a, grind, a spray nozzle that is about five eighths of an inch wide, a little wider than what my wheel is. And normally I'll run a half inch wheel, sometimes a three quarter inch wheel, but most of the time I'm running half inch uh, wide wheel. So what we're gonna do is we are going to smash this copper tubing. You'll see as I get going, I'm gonna use these eighth inch copper or stainless steel welding rod bits as placeholders. So then I can insert my eighth inch copper in there. We will solder those in and then we will add our sacrificial tips that we can, you know, change. We can get new straws. We can add on them. We can get these pretty close to the wheel. The wheel will grind them away even if they slightly touch the wheel. And if one of these gets sucked under the wheel, you know, the chances of that being catastrophic are pretty low, even though it wouldn't be happy about it. But it's much better than getting anything else pulled under the wheel. You'll see and you can 
modify this to your little heart's content, um, you'll see how I do it and you can add or take away or whatever you want to do. So the old track anvil's got a bit rusty. I need to resurface it. I'm just going to flatten this out a little bit. Oh man, don't flatten it out too much. Now I'm going to stick these in here. So, so I don't smash it too much, but I can make little, hopefully, make little indentions for my copper tubing that I want to solder in here. I done bent it too much, Steve. Golly, buddy. There we go. I get out of there. I'm not cooperating. I need maybe a little bit harder hammer. A little bit better smash on this guy. Probably good enough. So that, that looks really good. Let's go over to the uh, saw and cut us six. Well, actually we need four. So we've already got two, uh, four little pieces about that long for this copper tubing that we can jam up in there. So it has been just ridiculously hot here lately. Last couple weeks, you know, low to mid 90s, super high humidity, 75 to 90% humidity, just crazy hot. So I've got everything kind of cleaned up here, just uh, relatively decent, just used a Brillo. And then I deburred both ends of this copper tubing. That's just a center drill welded to a piece of drill rod with a piece of round uh, PVC. I've been using this for years. It works great for deburring small holes. So this is what I've done. I really, I'm going to cut this off pretty short here. And then I'm going to machine an adapter to just super quick to make this adapt to my 3 8 tubing. I know they sell th half inch to 3 8 copper tubing adapters for 50 cents at the store. But I'm not driving to the store. So I'm going to make one super quick. I'll probably do it on the mini lathe. You know, just so I can get this project moving forward. So when I set up this temporary coolant system, I'm starting to take it all apart. 
because it was temporary. Uh, it was mounted right here with a couple of band clamps, just uh, screw clamps, I guess you'd say. Um, but originally, when I got this grinder, it had this dust collection hood. I don't know if that's an original one or not. It had a dust collection hood mounted there. This wheel rotates clockwise. It rotates clockwise and throws coolant, grinding debris and grit that way. So I don't want this here because I will want a dust collection system on this at some point. So I want my coolant system to be over here on the right hand side, you know, kind of keep it nice and tidy and close because that's where it's going to be spraying the coolant is right on the right hand side of the wheel there. So I did notice that on the back side of this um, wheel cover, there are two quarter inch 20 uh, screws or sockets. That way uh, something can be mounted here. So I'm going to quickly show you what I've got. I've got started on it already to make a bracket to hold this. That way we can adjust it up and down. We'll be able to twist it a little bit just due to the uh, design of the fitting and we will still leave our left hand side of the wheel open for a nice du dust collection system. So let's do that super quick before we finish the little spray nozzle. So you can see on the back of the wheel guard there, there is two quarter 20, quarter 20 bolts that are just made into the to the housing. And I did weld this slotted piece of steel that I already had in my steel cabinet, or just my, my junk uh, box to be honest, scrap pieces. I already welded this bracket to it. And now I need to come up with a way to attach, and I may just weld it, I mean there's no there's no real, real reason not to, I don't guess, because I got up and down movement in this bracket. As long as I get, uh, as long as I get this centered with with the center of the wheel, or pretty close, it ain't got to be perfect. So I've already marked it here. I think that's where I'm gonna. I think that's where I'm gonna cut this bracket off on this side of the line. So let's go over the saw. Let's cut that off. Then we will, uh, we'll probably just weld. We'll just put a couple tack welds there. I think that'll be just fine. And just weld that to it. It ain't gotta be perfect. We just want it to be functional more than anything, really. So ever so often people will message me and they'll say, what blade are you running on your just general use saw? I use this thing all the time. I don't swap blades out 99% of the time. I want a general purpose blade in this thing that I can cut about anything that I put in here. That may not be the best choice for all scenarios. There's no such thing, really. This is a 1418 pitch. In fact, it's a Starrett Intense Pro Die half inch bite by the spool, make my own 13 mil, 25 thousandths thick, or 0 0.065 millimeter, 14, 18 pitch. So it's not great at thick stuff. It's not great at thin stuff, but it is capable of handling the majority of things that I throw at it anyway. So that's the blade that I like to use. I don't even bother with the high speed or with the uh, carbon steel blades. You know, you can get them cheaper, yeah, but you'll change them two or three times as often. So just get the good blades right up front. You know, there's lots of good manufacturers of blades, but I've had really good luck with the Starrett blade stock. So that's what I'm running on this, and that's what I have been running for years. I really like this stuff, just for general use, that is.
And I'm just going to put a small tack there, square it up, and then weld. About out of gas. Well, would you look at that? I welded that backwards. Good thing I just tacked it on there. That's why you always check your stuff before you buzz it together permanent. Pretty close, I think. I think that's going to work. So I'm not going to weld this thing like it's going on a you know, nuclear submarine. Just going to buzz it together where it doesn't doesn't fall off. But if I ever want to remove it or adapt it, I can. So well, I've made the mistake many times of over welding stuff. You know, especially on something like this, just not necessary. So you kind of take it easy. So there's that part of it. Don't look too bad. I think that. Uh, I think that'll work. Got a little bit of adjustment in it as well. And then we could even spray a little paint on it if we cared enough. But we, but we don't. It's fine, just as it is. So now let's finish up the nozzle. Hmm. Got a little flux on there. That looks like a little frog gig. If you ain't never been frog gigging, you just don't know what you're missing. Those little guys are cute and delicious. toothpick. Just a little bit of flux. I need to get some more. I'm just about out of flux. Man, those are crooked. So here's where we're going to fail or win. At least I think this is the point where we're going to fail or win. So a little bit of solder.
hopefully that should be enough, I think, as long as it's closed up. But I think it's closed up anyway. Not 100% for sure, but, you know, we'll, we'll find out. So I was digging around and I found this. It's just a quarter MPT. It's just a brass fitting. It's the perfect ID, three eighths of an inch, slightly over three eighths of an inch, and almost the perfect OD. So I can just cut this off and use that as a reducer. Like I mentioned, I think I mentioned it anyway. You can buy a three a half to a three eighths reducer from the store, but you have to go to the store to get it. And uh, I'm not doing that. So I'm just gonna cut this off and use that as my reducer. Then I'll solder it all together to a piece of the 3 8 pipe. We'll clean this guy up. We'll finish it out with the tips. It's gonna be it's gonna be nice. Looks kinda kinda rough right now, but just give it a chance. So there is our miniature spray nozzle. Now we need to add on our tips, but these little coffee straws are too small to fit on there. So we got to stretch these out a bit. Let me show you, show you how I, I figured out a way to make it, make it happen. So I've got an eighth inch stainless welding rod. I've got my heat gun here. And all I'm going to do is first plug in my extension cord, then Gonna heat this just slightly. I don't want to melt this. These are awful thin. Just gonna heat it, kind of mess with it a bit. Heat the straw itself just a very little, and then press this on there, and it will stretch this straw out. Here's one that's done. I don't know if you can see the difference or not. It'll stretch that straw out enough just to where it will slide on the end of these. And it slides on good and tight. And then we'll take all of this over to the grinder and adjust it. You know, make it to where it puts coolant exactly where it needs to go. And if we want to have a narrower stream, we can just probably just jam a toothpick in the end of the ones that, you know, we don't want to use or put a little rubber plug over them. You get the idea. It's adjustable. Let's, uh, let me plug in this cord. See, the idea with these fingers is that if you get in, if they get under the grinding wheel, you can get these really close to where they're basically, you know, almost rubbing the wheel. And, you know, you can, you can replace them. They get damaged or whatever. It's kind of thought anyway. I think it's kind of neat, and I want to try it. There we go. Look at those. I 
Oh, man. I actually think this is going to be pretty cool. Set up just a little, maybe even tweak that down some. Turn it on. I like that. So really I could probably do away with the two outer ones. But you know, this is the first first run. I like that. I actually really do like that. I think that that's going to improve the safety and where the coolant's going because otherwise having that piece of copper right up next to the wheel, you know, I just didn't like that. I'm just regrinding in a set of little parallels, cleaning them up, both sides and then the tops. This is a set of uh, shop-made parallels, the uh, A2, that I'd made sometime back and uh, they would gotten a little bit of corrosion and stuff on them from you know, the shop construction and all that stuff. So I'm just cleaning them up. I like the way that that works. I really do. So that is a pretty neat little coolant spray nozzle. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you could accomplish the exact same thing. I built this one this way because I thought probably this is the way that most people would do it. You could machine this out of a solid block and we could go through the trouble of reaming the holes where the straws had an interference fit in there and we super glued them in and all of those things we could have done. But I figured that the majority of people would do something similar to this. All it took was a hammer, some copper tube, some solder, a torch. You could have even just got away with a hacksaw. It would have took no machine tools at all to make this, uh, what we did right here. You could do that with a hairdryer heat those up enough to get them on there. You get the idea. We could have made it far more beautiful or intricate or advanced, but this will serve the purpose and probably do just as good a job as anything else a person's gonna build. So as these straws get worn down a little bit, you could just, you know, if you got a little bit of adjustment in the, in the way that your setup is here, you can just, you know, bump it into the wheel. They'll wear away. The chances of these getting pulled under the wheel are probably pretty slim. They're going to wear away within just a few seconds of running this thing and uh, put the coolant exactly where it needs to go.
So I like this. Uh, when I seen Robin come up with something like this, I was like, man, I gotta make one of those for myself. That's pretty neat. So that's why I called it the Robin Renzetti Magic Fingers, Cooling Fingers. Cause it looks like a bunch of little fingers. <laughs> Gosh, it's like a snapping turtle, this little girl. She's always thinking she gotta bite somebody. So there is no doubt that using coolant, it, it's a messy business, but it does such a good job of keeping accuracy, like on a, on a surface grinder, keeping your parts cool, keeping your cutters lasting longer on a, on a milled machine or, or whatever. And if you can get that coolant directed where it needs to go, you can use less of it and get the same result. Keeps down the mess. Plus some designs, maybe like this one here, you know, maybe a little safer than something that you would use otherwise. It's definitely safer, I think, than what I was previously using. So take that idea, run with it, modify it. Maybe you've got something better. And if you do, I'd love to hear about it. Leave it down in the comments. What have you been using? What's working for you? You know, because this idea came from Robin Renzetti. You know, he's the guy that I first seen do something like this. So, you know, I'd love to hear what you use. So that is it for this week anyway. Thanks for watching viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever. It is much appreciated. So that is it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.